about to do a Sonar 6 producer edition demo. Sonar 6 is the technology leading digital audio workstation for Windows. It is the first DAW to natively support Windows Vista. And basically, in a nutshell, anything that you can imagine that you want to do with audio or music, you can do with this application. It offers un... Was that us? I think so. Okay. It offers unlimited tracks of audio, unlimited tracks of MIDI. You can work with uh, virtual instruments. You can do audio looping. You can edit with professional effects and do all of your mixing. Sonar has the highest quality mix engine in the entire industry, 64-bit end-to-end. And to give you an idea of what that means, uh, a CD is 16-bit audio. So Sonar, having 64-bit audio, has four times the audio resolution of a CD. So that, ga that guarantees you that from start to finish, your audio is going to sound better than ever. So what we're going to do in this demo is we're going to show you how to create a remix in Sonar. And uh, Bill is going to be driving, Mr. Bill Jackson, our tech support master. And uh, I guess we'll just get going. So, Bill, uh, why don't you tell us what we're going to do? I think what we're doing uh, a song by the Gorillas. Gorillas, so, yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, it's uh, Dub Incorporated. You can just drag it right off a folder or right off the desktop. Or drop it right there. So now, what what you just did is like really convenient. So basically, you can find anything in your computer and you can just drag it right in. You know, any audio loop, an audio file, whether it's an MP3, a WAV file, a Windows Media file, anything you want to work with, you can bring it in. Now, this is an acapella vocal part that uh, the Gorillas released on their 12-inch, and uh, Bill put it in here, and it's going to go in. Why don't we listen to it a little bit so people can hear what we're working with. So we should listen to it with the metronome and make sure it lines up. It's uh, necessary for... Sonar and the original content should be at the same tempo in order for you to be able to drag in uh, loops and patterns and have them match automatically. Okay, so what you're, what you're noticing there was uh, the audio didn't really match up with the metronome. So our project is set at a certain tempo and that person is singing at a different tempo. Now, in other applications that might be a problem, but in Sonar it's not because we have a suite of tools in Sonar 6 called Audio Snap. And Audio Snap turns your audio into rubber. Basically, you can stretch it, you can change the tempo, you can extract timing from one piece of audio and apply it to another piece of audio, you can quantize audio in relation to each other. But what we're going to do here is just one small part of Audio Snap. We're going to extract the tempo from this audio clip so that our project will match up to it. So, why don't you show them? Okay. So, this guy's beatbox with a two measure loop, so we'll listen to it. Uh, two measures of that, stop it on the third. Tell Sona where the third is. Okay, so that's third measure. We may make sure we're right up on it. We use these buttons to shift between slices of the audio. Third, third measure. Measure three, beat one. Be okay. So now that Sona knows where that is, the tempo is going to lock up. Okay, so that's that's locked up. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to bring in uh, an audio loop. That might be the first thing that you'd want to do when you're creating a remix. Uh, you have your acapella vocal in there, and you want to start making some beats. So Sonar uh, supports acid format loops. You can also make your own acid format loops. And uh, when I say acid format, what that means is that your audio loops are going to match the tempo and the key of your project. So he's got the Loop Explorer open. All you need to do is click on different loops, and you'll uh, hear them get time in your project. Finds one that he likes. All he has to do is double click it or just drag it into his project. And now to make that part repeat within the project, all he has to do is grab the edge of the clip and he can roll it out. Now, audio looping tools are really, really flexible. So 
We're just working with the loop as it is. Now, if you wanted to, you could get in and manipulate the loop. You have control over every single slice of the loop. So what that allows you to do is you can change the gain on a, on a slice, and that would, um, you could drop the snare out if you didn't want the snare there, for instance. Or you could do things like uh, change the pitch of individual slices. So if you were working with a bass loop, a bass groove, and let's say it like locked really tight with the song, but the bass player played a note that you didn't want, at some point you could change the pitch to make it fit with your song. You can also control the pan in this view as well. So you can really take loops and make them their own. You know, one of the biggest problems that I find with a lot of hip hop and dance music is people just use loops, their stock loops, I'll hear the same loop in different places, but in sonar you can avoid that by tailor making it to your song, making it something else. So, now we'll move on to using this for playing the RXP. Okay, now what RXP is, is it's a groove sampler. So, what it allows you to do is it allows you to work with Rex files, and uh, you may be familiar with the Rex file format because it's something that uh, was introduced in Propeller Head's Reason. So, if you happen to have Reason, uh, you can plug Reason in, or you can take the Rex files from Reason and use it, and this ships with a wide variety of Rex files as well. So, he's going through the pattern browser here looking for the loop he wants to work with. So that sounds pretty good. So now, in in this program here, in this uh, plugin, uh, each slice gets mapped to a different mini map. Okay, so uh, the paths that are below it uh, show which node is mapped to which slice, and you can actually drag the MIDI pattern right from within the application into Sonar so that it can start manipulating. <laughs> wants to make that repeat, just control clicks, and you can drag it out. Right, bang, we now have 16, 16 bars of uh, going on. And if you wanted to, you could manipulate uh, that loop to remix it, so you'd be using the sounds just by double-clicking on one of those MIDI patterns. It would open up the piano roll view, and he can change the notes that are playing. But we want to take out that to select it. Okay. All right. Or if you wanted to make it repeat, you could copy and paste it somewhere else. And it would make it go back and trigger that thought. So what are we going to move on to next? We'll insert uh, another loop over here. Okay. Uh, the way this changes. So we'll get rid of this. We'll uh, end this loop here by splitting it and it. Now, you know, so that was the section where the song changed, and, you know, when you're doing a remix, it's real common for you to want to mix things up right before the section of the song changes. So if he's going to grab another loop, he's going to bring something in. Alright, so now we got another loop. Roll this one and roll it out. Okay, so that was pretty simple. So now, now our own bass line. What's that, Bill? We'll insert our own bass line now. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to load a virtual instrument. And uh, Sonar works with both DXI and VSTI instruments. It's actually the first application to support Steinberg's VST 2.4 format. Or Steinberg, I might add. And uh, what we're pulling up here is Rapture. Rapture is a virtual instrument that's available from Cakewalk separately. It uh, offers uh, like just really, really great basses, leads, synthesized sounds. It uh, gives you six oscillators that you can work with, tons of LFOs and filters and step sequencers so you can manipulate it. And it just ships with a wide variety of sounds to work with. Yes. We'll use input quantizer on a MIDI track. All right, so with input quantize, what that allows you to do is if you have uh, poor rhythm or if you just want to be really accurate when you go in there, it will quantize your notes as you play them when you're recording. So if you set the input quantize to, I can't see what he did on the screen, but I'm eighth. imagining, yes, eight notes. So he'll be able to play a figure and it will play in time with the music while he's recording. <laughs> 
Input quantize does not, however, get you to hit the notes the right time if you don't hit the notes. You do have to take that one step. Things have gotten a lot easier in making music, but I'm not sure music for it. 